So this video is about something that I've been working on lately. It's a, a, a modular synthesizer. And this is one of my side projects. And I want to show you the process that I um, developed over my workflow and show you how I do it. Because um, I, I made a few uh, uh, researches on how to cut aluminum uh, for this project. And I started off with, I started out with wood. And which gave me not a such nice end result. Um, I tried um, acrylic. I tried uh, 3D printing my uh, my boards uh, by but ending up with um, these aluminum boards, which are much nicer in end result. And I've already connected everything uh, on my boards, as you can see. Um, and I want to show you just how I did it and I know there are some improvements to be made but I thought I'd just share this with you and maybe uh, it's helpful to you so here we go normally I start out with designing the circuit in ECDA as you would do normally and then of all these compounds they have the correct layout already for the circuit board then I uh, make a PCB of it, convert to PCB, and then you get this result. Um, you need to drag and drop the individual components to their correct place, and maybe even adapt the names and all that. Um, just for uh, sake of argument, I put a dimension over here um, for in the next uh, step of the process. Um, then I'll export this file into an SVG to import it into Fusion 360. Um, before I do that, I um, make these two layers invisible because uh, I only need the uh, outlines of the holes for the front plates in Fusion 360. Those are th these rounds, um, so I don't need the red lines for um, the circuit board. And after doing so, then we press export, SVG, and uh, we don't need the top layer, um, we don't need the bottom layer. And that's it. And you pre, uh, uh, press um, uh, export for um, yeah for exporting, <laughs> and then you press export. So so when you've started up Fusion 360, um, it's time to import the SVG you have just exported from ECDA. So insert SVG, uh, select your plane, select your file, and press open. So don't change anything yet, just press OK. And the thing is that uh, EasyEDA export is a, a bit funny. Um, first, of all, first of all, it's down, down here. That's kind of strange to me. But anyway, it is here. Um, and then you notice these dimensions that I have put over here. And the funny thing is that if you start measuring it in Fusion 360, it measures up 41.667, which is a difference in what I've made in EZDA because it says 40 millimeters. So um, th that means that all the dimensions and spaces between the holes in my drawing from EZDA are different in Fusion 360. So the end result of my uh, front plate is off by a few millimeters if uh, um, at the end of the day. So what you need to do is to change the um, uh, scale at the moment of import of your SVG file. And I'll show you how I did that. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of a hassle, but I'll, I'll show you what I did. I'll start with a blank file um, I insert my SVG again select my face um, open up the file and don't do anything yet and and then you should do a little calculation so it starts with one your scale one and then your measured length in fusion 3 uh, 360 41 six, seven divided by when I've drawn an easy DA minus one gives me a, a scale factor of this and we copy that number and just paste it into the scale 
just press OK. And now it starts calculating. Again, it's the same funny position, but who cares? And there you go. And now when you start measuring up this 40 millimeters, which I've drawn in EVA, you see now that if I measure it, it is nearly my 40 millimeters that I want it. So the difference is now uh, smaller and, and maybe even not noticeable at this point, depending on the slack that you give the hole uh, surrounding your components. So then uh, uh, finish sketch. And now let's say that I want to make these holes appear in my um, uh, front plate. Then I need to draw a front plate. So I'm going to draw a rectangle somewhere over here um, on the plane here. And let's say this is the dimension of my front plate is 128. And the width of my front plate is 45 millimeters. So there you go. And I don't want to. Make, oh, I want to extrude this because the material, the stock material is two millimeters. And now I want to have this hole and this hole and that hole and that hole as well. I want to extrude it and I want to do that right through my body. There you go. Make it a cut operation. Press OK. And now I can change these hole sizes, uh, dimensions if I like, for. Um, you know, the slack and all that. But the thing is that I've now got these holes created and I'll show you the um, the end, pros, end result of my drawings uh, for my front plates. So what you see here is the end result of my drawings of the front plates. Um, you see a test piece for the different dimensions of the holes that I, uh, I was looking for. Um, I've got these small pots and, and uh, some knobs and all that and I wanted to test um, which hole is best for um, you know a tight fit a snug fit but not too tight and not too loose so um, this is my test piece you can disregard this and these are the other four boards that I've created already I've, I've drawn all these in EZDA um, I, I shipped them out to uh, or sent them online to uh, to uh, to the manufacturer they shipped it back to me um, I assembled the components and uh, meanwhile I made these drawings for the front plates uh, so that's what you see here um, there is no um, a text um, uh, machined on it because that's what I do uh, on the sketch and there you can see these are all uh, just sketches and if you look at it closely uh, and then you can see that is a simplex dot uh, shx font I don't know exactly what it means but the, the, the what I do know is that it's just a simple line text font which is great for um, manufacturing the uh, boards um, so anyway so let me show you my manufacturing setup. I start by showing you the setup. Um, I selected my X and Y axis um, uh, for the uh, coordinate system. Um, and I set the stock box point in this corner. So that makes it relatively easily, easy for me to uh, make the zero position on the stock because I want to get more front plates out of one sheet of aluminum so this gives me a nice reference point point. and then on the stock page that I added a stock side offset of 10 millimeters to make sure that everything that I'm doing I can see in the simulation uh, so that's, that's the setup and it goes for all three of them um, first then I start w by engraving the text on the on the aluminum uh, this is a trace function and is using a jerry tool um, it goes down three steps each of 0.1 millimeters so start at zero as uh, minus 0.1 minus 0.2 and these are the settings fairly standard uh, runs at 12,000 rpm uh, 1000 milli uh, millimeters per minute it's it's you know it's all a pretty standard um, here's your 0.2 uh, actual offset um, so th this is pretty standard, it works okay for me um, then the next process is I change the bit 
and um, uh, I change it to a three millimeter bit because I want to do all the small holes drilling uh, as you can see over here and the settings are 12,000 rpm 500 cutting feet rate um, then something here is a multiple depths of 0.1 millimeters actually it's just a basic drilling operation but because it's a small hole it makes these n nice little circles and it you know it's just a feels uh, it, it, it works a bit better on my machine that way and then I changed for the third time uh, the bit to a six millimeters and uh, to do all the other holes the bigger holes and also the contour uh, so it's a contour process and it's 12,000 rpm uh, cutting feed rate is the same the funny thing here is that I make it multiple dips and I do it in steps of one millimeter down and um, Th that, that that works brilliant make sure that you do all the inner circles first so all these first and then go to the outside I added some tabs over here um, one two three and four um, they are six millimeters wide uh, 1.5 millimeters in height and basically that's it and um, that gives me an if I select all these uh, files and I run the simulation. Can I do that? Yeah, I should be able to do that. Oh, hang on. I can run the simulation and play it to the end. And there you have this is my end result. And it looks good on simulation. And I'll show you the um, actual machining on the machine. I have to manually adjust the speed of my uh, Crest spindle and I've put it to position 4 which is about 12,000 RPMs or so. Um, this gives me a nice results on uh, aluminum um, doing the bigger holes. So I'll show you the three different bits that I'm using. Uh, first is a jerry tool of 0.25 millimeters uh, for engraving the aluminum and then I'm using this 3 millimeter bit for making the smaller holes and uh, six millimeter bit um, two flute for uh, creating the bigger holes um, I was told that a one flute is better for uh, aluminum but I don't have a one flute for aluminum so I'm using this two flute um, I'll show you the machining job and here I'm setting the Z0 position as you can see I'm using this box uh, inside my CMC machine uh, on top of the scrap board and uh, just is to keep the dirt inside um, in, in the box because I'm also using WD-40 uh, as cooling and um, uh, so it keeps it a bit t uh, neater in my side machine so this was the engraving um, now I'm changing the 2 to the 3 millimeter bit uh, for doing the smaller holes um, the position of my C0 position uh, uh, has changed a bit but because I'm keeping the X and Y positions at the same zero position that's not a problem uh, in regards to uh, the zero positions so those were the two holes changing the bit to a six millimeter bit for doing the bigger holes and the whole contour process um, I'm also adding a bit more WD-40 now because I want some more coolant to be there inside already and not be there with my hand uh, as close to the tool while the machine is running. Um, so I just set the Z0 position loaded in my file. Uh, it's cutting away chips and here you can see the contour process. And it's all been done in a matter of a few minutes really. Um, here I'm checking uh, everything, I'm cleaning up the machine just a bit. As you can see everything is pretty uh, uh, nicely added up in the in the box. I'm checking it, uh, getting it out and giving it a good scrub with uh, hot water and uh, uh, washing soap and uh, then you get this end result. So there you have it, this is the end result of one of the boards. I'm pretty happy with it. I've designed everything myself, the circuits, um, the boards, um, the front plate, um, collected all the parts, assembled it, uh, machined it, and I think it's a fairly good result. 
uh, considering the fact that I made it just from aluminum uh, for front lights. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I hope this is helpful and I'll talk to you soon.